Uh, today we are speaking with Dan Armour, Manager of Technical Services with Joy Mining Machinery. Uh, we're at the ARC ARC World Industry Forum in Orlando, and the topic for this discussion is how Joy Mining Machinery is leveraging 3D content to help companies maximize their mining productivity. Welcome, Dan. Thanks. Uh, to begin our discussion, could you briefly describe your company and the kinds of equipment and services you provide to the mining sure. industry? Sure. Yeah, Joy Mining Machinery is part of a bigger company called Joy Global. Uh, Joy Mining specifically supplies underground mining machinery, uh, machines that cut and extract, transport coal, uh, and as well as other bedded materials underground, um, as well as the various services, which is what I'm involved in surrounding that equipment. Uh, what kind of services are they? Um, particularly training, maintenance, troubleshooting, uh, those sorts of things. Okay. Thanks, I'm sure that'll help a lot of our viewers. Sure. Uh, could you now tell us a little about how Joy is leveraging 3D content to improve your business? And explain to the viewers what we mean by 3D content. Or what sure, mean. sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, my background is in uh, mechanical engineering, so I grew up uh, using 3D tools for the design process, but leveraging that content means taking what the engineers have used and then using it downstream uh, to help other people. So uh, whether that be a maintenance person, a trainer, a uh, person in the classroom, someone who under needs to understand better how to do things, you can leverage or reuse that 3D information to make it easier to understand that particular process. Okay. Uh, what was happening in your business? I mean, why did you feel you had to do that? It sounds very good, but why did you feel you had to do that? Sure. You know, it made you realize that you needed yeah. that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, there were a number of things. Um, you know, the, uh, the machinery itself was becoming more and more complex. A lot of people think of, you know, coal mining as this dumb industry, but, you know, we have some of the most sophisticated uh, machines in the world, and uh, our people needed to understand those machines. Meanwhile, the mining industry was losing a lot of people for turnover, retirements, that sort of thing. There's a whole generation gap that's missing, and so we're adding a tremendous number of people in the mining industry. So the combination of those two things, and then you look at the, what we're doing in emerging markets like China, India, Russia, places where there's a language barrier, the combination of all those, those three things, uh, it was just natural that a, a visualization helps much better than, and helps you get the information out, get the understanding there much faster. What, what were your goals for this project and, and what kind of benefits have you received to date? Sure. You know, I'm particularly responsible for uh, training and engineering level service and our technical publications group. So that's what's really where, you know, my particular goals were focused um, on, number one, improving the speed at which we were producing our technical manuals, but more importantly, it was trying to find uh, new tools to help with the processes. So, uh, for instance, in the TechPub side, we were able to create a little bit better visualizations, but by the time we were done with the, with the visualizations or the 2D visualizations that are normally in our books, our trainers had an extra tool that they could use and go out and display it using this 3D that was much more useful. And then downstream, as we're pushing it out to our customers, uh, the goal was that when a person went to fix one of our pieces of equipment, they could log on see a process, understand it very quickly, and uh, get a piece of machinery up and running more quickly. Um, I'm fascinated by this topic. So I'm, cu I'm curious, you know, I'm sure it takes a lot of effort to develop a 3D document. I would think it does, or could you describe that? Because one might think that it takes a lot to build 3D. I mean, 3D, everyone can see the benefits, sure. I would presume but it might be difficult. Someone might say, would I invest that much time and money? Sure, sure. Well, we talk about leveraging. That means you, know, you already have something. So in the instance where you own the engineering data, then you're that much further ahead. So um, you know, certainly if you've got the engineering data, um, we were in the process of transferring half of our legacy engineering data from 2D to 3D. So in the early days, we didn't have as much 3D data. Now we're getting to the place where we almost have too much 3D data. So it's, it's really a balancing act between not having enough and, and, uh, and finding the right thing for the particular audience that you're, you're looking at. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it does depend on whether or not you have that engineering data, but that certainly wouldn't stop you either because some of the newer tools that are out there and uh, some of the kids coming out of art school can take a photograph of your iPad, for instance, and, and make a 3D model of it in a few seconds. And, and if all you're trying to say is, this is an iPad and this is what it looks like on the back, then you've solved that problem very quickly. Uh, could you tell us what technology you use to accomplish this? 
Sure. And, and you know why you chose those tools? Yeah, I'm sure there's various tools. Yeah, I mean it, it's currently called uh, SAP's Visualization Suite. Uh, at the time, we bought it as Right Hemisphere, uh, with a number of different tools for um, not only the uh, production of the of the uh, content, but also the archiving and then the end user experience. There's a, a viewer, so it's a combination of those th three tools that were uh, part of this SAP Visualization Suite. And, and why did you choose those? I mean, over other, or were there others? Sure, there were a number that we that we evaluated. Um, you know, we f there were some that were more focused only on the production and to get your tech pubs out faster. Um, there were some that were only focused on training materials. Uh, some didn't have the back end architecture, and uh, SAP or the the right hemisphere tools seemed to have the whole suite that could get you know the areas I was responsible for up and running across the board, um, and then maintain it over a longer term. Do you have any future plans to do any more with it? I mean, to enhance what you're doing or to use it in other ways or anything that you may have learned from this experience? Yeah, I mean, we're right now we we spent a lot of time developing. You know, it was a new area that people you know, traditionally you'd get a book and here's your book and here's your 2D things. How do you integrate integrate 3D into that? We've spent a lot of time figuring that out. Uh, in the meantime, we've bought a number of companies, so we've added product lines. So really, it's about applying what we've already learned and doing more and more and more of it. Um, we're, we'll be um, outsourcing some of those things. And then the new thing that we're getting into more is into uh, not just the visualization, but in simulation, um, actually simulating the equipment for operator training, but also software testing. Yeah, now that's something that does not naturally come from a design. I, I used to design mechanical equipment myself, sure. and so I'm familiar with the design tools and what you do, and you always made different views, and today you use 3D tools to help you with that. But you don't necessarily have animation in mechanical sure. equipment. Uh, so is that something that you have to do something special with? Are you using right hemisphere for that? or? Yeah, yeah or? We, we are. You know, it's kind of funny. I talked about too much information. You know, we get these CAD models that have a conveyor in four different positions. So there's actually four conveyors in the CAD model, and we have to knock those things out, and then we animate through that position because it's much more efficient. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, um, there, there is a lot of animation. Like I say, if it doesn't come natural to an engineer to animate, but if you get a creative person that, that it comes natural to, you put those two things together, the CAD information and someone who can sort of visualize in that way, um, it's actually quite a quick process. Okay, what advice would you offer to someone who wants to enhance their own capabilities with 3 Someday, it's, it seems to offer a lot of benefits, but what sure. advice might you give for someone at, contemplating such a project? Yeah. Um, you know, I guess one of the things I didn't expect is some of our trainers who it's a, a really great tool and they kind of look at it and go, yeah, I'd, I'd like to use that, but they're uncomfortable with it. And I think bringing people's comfort level who are used to using a, a 2D or living in a, on a 2D tools, bringing that comfort level up along the way and bringing people along with you, you know, it's sort of, it seems obvious to some, but to others it's not. So I'd say, you know, just take your team on the journey with you instead of just kind of plopping it on them, so which some of the mistakes I may have made. Okay. Well, Dan, thank you very much for the information you've shared with us today. Sure. Uh, that was Dan Armour of Joy Mach uh, Mining Machinery, and he was talking to us today about leveraging 3D content for improved mining productivity.